Hello, Obophiles! On this Technique Tuesday, we're talking about transpositions. Are they useful? Should you do them? How do you work on them? Let's find out. A lot of people formally start doing transposition exercises when they are freshmen in college, maybe they're doing the Barrett book, Transpositions, which is this really uh, famous exercise to do with the articulation studies that happen right before the melodies. And there's, I think, 12 of them, and you might do them in the original key and then in a step up or down in a different key. And that's really useful. It's kind of a good mental exercise to really find out if you know your scales. But I think transpositions are useful even before that. And if you have a good understanding of how these trans transpositions work, you will be better at your scales, you will be better at reading music, and you'll just be better at playing in tune and doing a lot of musical things on your instrument. So how do they sound? Well, I might take an etude that is in C, like this second articulation etude, and then I'll play it up a half step in D flat, Or maybe I might even play it down a half step in B major. If you want to see the whole etude played that way, you can check in the description below. There's a link to that. But maybe that's too advanced, and you want to start doing some work to refine your bow playing before you get to that level. Well, the first transposition that a lot of people do, and they might not realize it's a transposition, is just scales. Now in Texas, we do this one scale pattern in band class, and it used to drive me crazy because I'd want my students to do all variations of rhythms and things, and a lot of times they're just so glued into this one rhythm pattern that it's hard for them to break out. But I actually think it's pretty useful because it's the same for all the scales and they do them every day. And the pattern goes like this. Well, if you move it up a half step, you're just playing a different scale. So I'm playing a D flat scale instead. And if you think about your scales as part of the transpositions, they're already doing their job. When we move things to different keys, we want the intonation to be similar, but the instrument does not want that to happen. Whether you're playing on the oboe or the French horn or the trombone, the instrument has certain tendencies for certain notes, and learning how to voice them correctly or move the intonation slightly with your mouth or with your throat or oral cavity allows you to gain control over the intonation tendencies of your instrument. G on my instrument wants to be pretty high along with E. So when I'm playing a C major scale, I have to make sure that I voice them downward. That's not the same as when I'm playing an A major scale. <laughs> an A major scale, the E doesn't have to move down as much. But what's the next step? You might be looking for something more substantial. So I would say practice tunes that you know really well by heart in different keys or even different modes. For example, might move up a step from D major to E major. play these tunes in these different keys will challenge you in like a fun way to be more comfortable playing in four sharps. Sometimes that's really a pain because you're always thinking like, oh, it's not D natural, it's D sharp. Whereas when you play the tunes, you start to really realize the relationship of what the steps actually are and how to make them sound correct. If that's still too easy for you, try playing it in a different mode. So playing O oh, Susanna in D minor and then again in E minor will challenge you to understand what the key sounds like and how your hands and voice need to work for that particular key. 
When that's easier for you, try going to Dorian. Or up a step. Now, besides being useful in practicing your instrument and getting better at scales and things like that, getting more comfortable with these weird keys, or I should say more uncommon keys, is it really that useful? So I've never had to transpose up or down a step in orchestra. Seldom you'll have to transpose if you're working with a singer and they need to move it up or down a step to fit within their instrument. Similarly, the oboe's range is very limited. So unlike bassoon or French horn, we only really have like two octaves to work with. So when you're practicing transpositions of real pieces or like these barrette twos, you can really only move up or down by about a step before it leaves your range. For example, if you're playing a B natural in one etude and you move it down a half step, you're already playing your lowest note, a B flat. So just be careful with that. But if you are the person who can transpose on the spot, that's awesome. A, and you'll definitely be more in demand that way. The only transition I've ever really had to do in a live performance, like getting paid setting, is transposing English horn parts onto the oboe. So a good transposition to practice might be moving up a fourth or down a fifth and working that way so you can go from English horn to oboe music or oboe to English horn music. Other than being a great way to get some good skills on your oboe, it's also just kind of interesting and fun. It's a good like mental puzzle. So you could either do like 20 Sudoku puzzles or you could do one transposition etude and you'll get the same amount of like mental strength from that. I hope you guys have fun transposing on your instrument, whether it be the oboe or the French horn or the saxophone or clarinet, whatever it is, when in doubt, play beautifully.